This is Jim, <clears throat> FRC LabVIEW Mentor. We're going to describe the setting up in um, RFC RoboRio project, the functions of begin and finish VIs in this uh, video. So hang on. The channel assignment for each peripheral interface from our computer to the rest of our robot needs to be um, run through begin and finish. And there's some basic rules that you need to follow, and they're relatively straightforward once you get them down. Each input or output must have a unique name. Each con connection to the robot must go to a single RoboRio channel. And I recommend using a, a spreadsheet that lists all the work, the uh, channels on the RoboRio, and then indicate which device is connected to each channel. Now, this spreadsheet must be updated when anything is changed, but if it's followed religiously, it can serve as an important communication link between the programmers and the build team. So if we look at a picture of the RoboRio, you will see there's a number of uh, connection points. For instance, here on the right, listed as PWM, these are the pulse width modulated channels that are used for motor controls. On the left are digital I.O., which are digital signals that serve as interface to both uh, limit switches and encoders. At the bottom, we have analogs and relays. The point being, each of these has a designated channel number, and it's important that we wire to uh, each one as it's required and uh, I recommend that you use the examples uh, as you do this. So here's what a robot setup worksheet might look like, indicating each channel and then what element is connected to it. Ultimately, the, uh, the worksheet will be used by the wiring, uh, the programming team to confirm that the wiring is correct. So it's important to keep it up to date. Now, Channel names set up and begin must match exactly, and I'm, I'm talking about capitalization space, the name itself much match, must match exactly what's entered in the rest of the program when we refer to that channel. Any channel that's opened and begin must be closed and finished, and consequently it needs to have exactly the same name that we set up and begin. And then again, use the FRC examples as a reference if you have unfamiliar uh, sensors or actuators. So here's what a typical example might look like. This is for motor control. I recommend that programmers become extremely familiar with a very simple example that can be used to troubleshoot later in the season whenever things are going crazy. My preference is the is the motor control example. It gives us the ability to control one device with a signal that does not depend on a joystick and consequently we limit the communication link. The example uh, front panel shows us how the wiring is made from the RoboRio, in this case a PWM channel, and you can go by the color code listed that connects it to the motor controller. So that's helpful both in the wiring team and then in the programming team. And over here, the part that's on the outside of the while loop is generally used to assign the name and begin, and we'll show that in a second. And then on the right, outside of this while loop that's being run for the example, this is where uh, finish, this information must show up and finish. And everything in between shows us how to assign value to that motor to change the speed. And so again, it's a good example both for documentation, for wiring, and then for the programmer itself. So let's get into uh, LabVIEW and try a couple of these out. Before I get into the details of uh, begin and finish, I want to make some point, a significant point, about starting a new RoboRail project. I'm on the Getting Started page in FRC LabVIEW, I'm going to start a new FRC RoboRail project. I want to assign it a name that makes sense, so I'm going to make this 2019 Gyms First. And I need to put my T 
team number in there. I also need to select which type of uh, format I want to use. Most of ours will start with Arcade. As I finish this, it opens up a new project window that shows me the target name that's using uh, dynamic assignment of the IP address. All right? If I go to Let's kind of take a stop here real quick. If I haven't already, to open up the FRC uh, Finder or Explorer, I go to Viewing Getting Started window. On the Support tab, I can click on Find FRC Examples, and it brings up this window, and it's open, or I can tell it's open when I have this little magnifying glass down here at the bottom on my tool. Uh, bar tool menu and then I'm going to look at the motor encoder project and that's the example I want to follow when adding motors when I open up that motor example I see that it has a IP address here different than what I have on my project that's generated automatically some Windows installations will deal with this some won't uh, and my <laughs> And I'm just passing along some little experience here. The way you deal with this is I come over to my robot project that I generated from the Getting Started page. I right click on the target name and look at properties. I left click and drag and control C to copy that value. I come back to my example, right click, look at properties. And I change that address by doing a control V to paste that dynamic stability designation in there. And I'm off and running. Now at that, when I close this, I want to save that. So the next time I open my uh, example, it'll have that new designation for my, with my team number. All right, I'm going to go in and open up. I'm on the example now for motor control. Double click on the VI. And as I do that, it opens up a front panel that shows me the uh, designation and how the RoboReo can be piped into or wired into a, con a controller. And then on the uh, block diagram, it shows me the program or how it could be uh, connected in my system. All right, so let's... To, after reading that or understanding that, let's go into my robot project. Any changes I want to make in my robot project, I want to do through the Project Explorer. And in this case, I want to start with Begin. So I open up Begin. It shows me the front panel, which doesn't do much for me. If I look at the block diagram, already set up in a basic project is two motors, which are labeled left and right drive motors and a joystick, which is set up for USB zero. Now this is the part that I would want to have recorded on my robot setup worksheet, where PWM zero is the left motor, PWM one is the right motor. I want to make sure that the type of motor, the motor controller matches what the team is going to be using. So rather than Talent SR, I make sure that this selection with this pull down uh, is the same as the team is using because I could have some misalignment there and cause problems later on. Let's say for now I'm using Talon SRX as my controller. So the example I want to follow then for any other motors I want to add is I need to have a PWM assignment, channel assignment, the correct type of controller, and then a name assigned to that channel. And in this case, I want to have the safety configuration enabled to make sure that we have a safe installation of the motor. So in this case, uh, and our, we're going to use a basic game controller coming into USB zero. Let's say for now I want to add an additional motor and a servo. To do that, I right click and I open up in the WPI robotics library under motors, which are which is an actuator. The motor palette, first I start with an open. 
Again, I'm following the format here. There's an open here for the drive, and I'm doing an open for a single motor. Again, I want to designate what type of uh, controller I'm using. Let's say we're using a Victor SP, and then I want to assign a name, and I'm matching this icon format here, which shows the arrow going into the block. And then the next thing I want is my enable safety. So let's get my safety configuration. Safety configuration is right there. And we're in good shape. All right. To get my PWM assignment, I hover over the PWM input, PWM channel input, right click, create a constant. And in this case, we know we want to use PWM2 as uh, this particular motor. We're going to connect it to the motor ref name assign and connect it to the motor configuration. The first terminal on the left is ref num name. Right click and create a constant. We've agreed that this particular motor is called ARM. So I'm going to type in ARM and I'm going to use capital first letter lowercase second letter so this next this motor is going to control my arm and over here i need to know that i right click <clears throat> excuse me create a constant which is enable now i know i also want to have a servo which is also an actuator i'm going to set that up so i'm going to right click go to my library or robotics library we're going to it's actually already pinned up here. I'm going to go up one level. Servos right next to uh, motors on my actuator palette. I want to have an open. I want to have a name assigned. And then there's no safety factor here, so I'm not going to worry about that. I follow the same type of example. I can look at the FRC example if I don't know how to do this. But in essence, right click and create the PWM channel constant. In this case is going to be PWM4, excuse me, 3. So I have 0, 1, 2, and now 3. And we're going to call the servo channel the grasp, grasper, G-R-A-S-P-E-R. -E so this is going to be some sort of a, and I want to use capital G just to be consistent. All right, I prefer, now any channel I open and begin, I need to close and finish. So I prefer to leave the open or begin channel open so that I can make sure I have exactly what I need to and finish. Now, if I don't have access to my Project Explorer, I come up to Window, Show Project. It brings up the Project Explorer window. Next thing I want to bring up is Finish. Double click on it. it, brings up the front panel. And again, I'm trying to position my uh, block diagram so I can see both at the same time. So window, block diagram. Now I've already set up some other channels here. I wanna make sure that uh, I've got the correct spelling now on my motors and my, my grasper. The way I'm going to do that, and again, I, I brought these in from the robot library. If I hold it, if I go to uh, peg it, look at the actuator list under robot motors, I pick up the motor. If you notice, the arrow points outside of the, of the folder. So I pick up the motor, and then I close the motor to follow the example that's already there. And you'll notice I've already done this now for ARM and for Grasper. In this case, it's using a motor icon. And in this case, it's using a server icon. And if I look at the name, now another way to do this, and I'm going to just re I'm going to repeat the ARM just to show you how it's done. I've got my basic motor, a get ref name connected up. I'm going to come over here to the motor and double click and do a control C. Come back to here. 
right click on the ref name, create a constant, now do a control V, and I'm assured it's exactly the capitalization and space that this original name is set up for. So I would do that for every device. So that's the way you set up, and each channel you set up here must be closed in finish. Once I'm done with that, I close all and save, and we're off and running. So that's begin and finish. Any questions, you're more than welcome to email me at jimc2550 at gmail.com.